Welcome to I-24 News Defense Magazine. I'm Alon Ben-David with your weekly review of security intelligence and strategic affairs. In this edition, close to one million Palestinians have gone through Israeli prison system along the years. The current number of uh, prisoners is 6,000 and our force Israeli security agencies must deal with on multiple levels. We explore this challenge. And what can be learned from the recent interrogation of a Hamas terror tunnel digger? Is Israel ready for the next round of infiltration terror? Let's begin. In recent days, we followed the stories of hunger striking Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails, once again bringing to light the delicate balance between caring for prisoners and maintaining control. Thousands of Palestinian security prisoners are currently in Israeli jails. They are a strong bargaining chip for any future negotiations, a political force and a security challenge. I-24 News received exceptional permission to visit one of the facilities holding Palestinian inmates to see what goes on behind the walls of one of Israel's maximum secured prisons. Tamer Harel brings the story. The pastoral setting of the Jezreel Valley in northern Israel also contains the Gilboa prison. It's home to some of the worst terrorists the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has produced in recent years. Around 600 of the prisoners here were jailed for security offenses, and they come from different organizations, including Fatah, the Islamic Jihad, and even of late, prisoners who identify with the Islamic State terror group. There are prisoners here serving multiple life sentences, very dangerous prisoners who have nothing to lose, so they try to escape all the time. They tried to dig a two to three meter tunnel from the toilets, but we found it in time. Even now, as we talk, someone is plotting to escape from this jail. There are prisoners here who carried out horrific acts, and there is a conflict. On the one hand, I represent the victims and Israeli society, and on the other hand, the prisoners are in my care. As regards smuggling prohibited items into the prison, the most popular is a cell phone. They try to do it every way, for example, during a hug with a child, or in someone's plaster cast, or hidden in a person's private parts. A cell phone is only one of many things which can help a prisoner plan a terror action from within the jail. This is their main objective. They sit year after year. Time needed to plan is not a problem, and neither is motivation. Carrying out a major action planned from within jail would be a huge triumph for the prisoners and for the Palestinian leadership. Are there attempts to plan a terrorist act from within prison? Definitely. Planning a terrorist action does not only depend on having a cell phone, it can also be done via family messages, via a lawyer. I can hermetically prevent such an action being planned in prison. All it needs is to simply stop everything. Not allowing lawyers to visit or families or parliament members, but it's impossible to come and say, okay, there was a terrorist act planned from prison, I'm canceling all prisoners' rights and privileges. Not here, not in Israel. These prisoners, murderers according to the Israelis, heroes in Palestinian eyes, are Israel's greatest bargaining chip in any negotiation over a prisoner exchange. They are also the next generation of the Palestinian leadership in the occupied territories, those who will decide whether the Palestinians turn to peace or continue the conflict. And to learn more of uh, these issues from the Palestinian perspective, we are now joined by uh, Ali Waked, I-24 News Senior Middle East uh, Analyst. Ali, thank you for joining us. Hello, hello. It seems that the Palestinian society looks at all prisoners as heroes, regardless of the crime that brought them in. Is this a consensus among Palestinians? It is a consensus. Of course, there is uh, some discussions and some of the uh, acts led by uh, these uh, prisoners are controversial even within the uh, Palestinian uh, society. But we should look at the larger picture. And the larger picture uh, says the following, uh, alone. Since 1967, uh, the year that the uh, West Bank and Gaza were occupied by the uh, Israeli army, the numbers of Palestinians until our days that were arrested by the uh, Israelis is around 850,000 
thousand uh, Palestinians, and this is uh, an, an, a huge uh, numbers that reflect the fact that uh, that many of the Palestinians uh, passed uh, through the Israeli uh, prisoners. Uh, we don't. We are not uh, talking about a Palestinian that faced a uh, life sentence. But even if you are arrested for days or weeks or or months, we are talking about eight hundred fifty thousand Palestinians that are who are uh, fathers and brothers and neighbors, etc. So uh, this became a phenomenon uh, that is gathering the Palestinian uh, around. And what are the crimes uh, uh, and the penalty uh, committed by uh, the prisoners is becoming secondary uh, to the issue of, of prisoner and to the fact that I have a brother or I have a neighbor who is facing uh, the Israeli uh, prison. And yes, most of the Palestinians consider the uh, prisoners uh, uh, heroes. And I think at the end of the day, when Israel and the Palestinian will come to the moment that they should maybe uh, sign a lasting uh, peace agreement, uh, I don't see any Palestinian uh, uh, leader that will accept to sign uh, the, 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 the agreement if uh, Israel uh, doesn't release all the prisoners and if there will uh, be a remaining in Israeli uh, Palestinians in Israeli jails. And also many uh, senior Palestinian officials and leaders are graduates of Israeli prisons. With the Palestinian president Mahmoud Abbas pondering resignation again, do you believe that the future leadership could be found in Israeli prison? I will tell you that two of the main names that are uh, raising every time we hear the uh, possibility that President Abbas uh, will resign are Marwan Barghouti that is now in Israeli uh, uh, prison. He is facing, I think, uh, five uh, uh, sentence of, of death. And the other name, the other uh, strong name is Mohammed Dahlan. Uh, very familiar to the Israelis, but also uh, passed uh, a number of years in the Israeli uh, uh, prisons. And I think uh, in, in your visit card, being in Israeli uh, jail can uh, strengthen your image in the Palestinian public uh, opinion. And I think that it would be very interesting to see, you know, alone we are uh, discussing the scenarios that uh, President uh, Abbas uh, uh, can uh, bring to the table if he uh, declares that he will Will, is, is quitting, and we know that there is a big tension between him and between Mohammed Ahlan. And some of the scenarios is that President Abbas will call upon the Fatah uh, movement to adopt Marwan Barghouti, who is now in the Israeli uh, prison, as the leader of the Palestinians, as the leader of the uh, Fatah uh, party, and a candidate for uh, presidency. And in this case, the Isra and if the Palestinian instances, the PLO executive uh, committees and the Central Committee of, of the uh, Fatah will adopt uh, uh, this uh, uh, proposition of President Abbas uh, to uh, nominate uh, Dahlan as their candidate. Uh, Israel will face, I think, a big uh, and unprecedented even challenge uh, uh, to have a Palestinian uh, leader that most, the majority of the Palestinians want to see him as their uh, president facing Israeli uh, uh, jail and arrested in the uh, uh, Israeli uh, prison. And at this uh, moment, I think that the Israelis are demanded to be very creative in order to face uh, growing pressure that will come from the international community. And, and more currently, we are all following the fate of Mohammed Alan, whose life are in danger after more than 60 days of hunger strike in protest of his uh, administrative detention. If he dies eventually, would it change anything? Uh, on the long term and on the uh, strategic level, I don't think it will uh, change because we still have a Palestinian leadership that is uh, committed to the uh, nonviolent uh, struggle, a Palestinian uh, leadership that is on daily basis arresting uh, members of Hamas and the Islamic Jihad in the uh, West Bank. But yes, it will uh, it will bring a wave of uh, it will bring a wave of, of violence that nobody uh, uh, can know. Uh, uh, we can imagine how it can. Uh, uh, start, but we cannot uh, anticipate how it will come uh, uh, to its end. And this is a nightmare for the Palestinian uh, uh, leadership that will put in a very negative uh, light the Palestinian uh, leadership. Uh, Hamas will accuse the Palestinian leadership that you are arresting uh, Palestinian activists and militants while Palestinian heroes, Palestinian uh, prisoners are uh, dying in the Israeli uh, jail. Ali Waka, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you a lot. Moving on, the recent capture of Hamas terror tunnel expert brought Israeli security sources to confirm 
that Hamas is working and digging new tunnels to replace the ones destroyed during last summer's war. Lauren Eisel reports. After last summer's conflict in Gaza, Israel hoped Hamas' ability to dig terror tunnels took a major hit, one that would last. Unfortunately, it seems that not only is Hamas digging more tunnels, but it is preparing for a new conflict with Israel. The Israel Security Agency recently announced that in July they had captured a Hamas fighter who provided them with locations of infiltration tunnels from Gaza. Ibrahim Shire, 21, from Rafa in Gaza, revealed that one of the tunnels he was digging led from Rafa to the Karam Shalom crossing. And the objective of new tunnels is to carry out attacks on Israel. According to the Israel Defense Forces, 32 tunnels were destroyed during Operation Protective Edge. 14 of them crossed into Israel. These are tunnels that are built with high quality cement. Cement that comes into Gaza from Israel as humanitarian aid. On average, every one of these tunnels costs roughly $3 million. Multiply that by the amount of tunnels that we found, and that leads to about $100 million that could have been invested in schools, in community centers, in hospitals, and mosques within the Gaza Strip. Shire confirmed to the Israel Security Agency that Israel is not the only place Hamas is getting resources to rebuild their military infrastructure. He verified a partnership between Hamas and Iran, which has allegedly been providing funds, advanced weaponry, and has trained Hamas operatives to infiltrate Israeli territory and airspace. We are trying to restore our abilities again, and we praise God. The war continues, and so does the burning and bombing, which are poured from the sky by the occupier's aircraft onto the heads of our people. But this will not stop the reconstruction of our forces and troops. Hamas has neither confirmed nor denied that the reconstruction of these tunnels is in full force. However, it says it is always preparing itself for another conflict with Israel and that the battle of the Palestinian resistance is ongoing. And joining me now in the studio is retired Colonel Atay Shelach, former head of the IDF Warfare Doctrine Department and commander of the Elite Combat Engineering Unit, Alon. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon. Israel has been dealing with tunnels from Gaza for more than a decade, and it still seems that this quite primitive tool, we don't have very effective answers to combat it. First of all, I don't think it's primitive. It's simple, but it's, uh, it's the main tool of the weakness. Of the when he take uh, as a tool against the, the IDF, which considers a strong army. So I don't think it's a primitive. It's a smart idea, and they are doing very well with this. But it seems that despite all the Israeli technology, we are still having a hard time detecting and finding those tunnels. Yes, because the underground uh, medium, it's uh, it's a very it, it's very difficult to find something underground. There is no much reaction under that, and if there is no any action under the underground. It's very difficult to dedicate to, to, to anything. It was published that Israel has recently deployed the first pilot of a system that is supposed to detect tunnels being dug. How soon until it become operational? First of all, it's, it's part of the solution. It's a small part, but very important. I don't want to talk about the time when it will be, but it's one of the part of the whole solution, and, and it will take time. You are still dealing with that as part of your uh, reserve service. What have you learned from the fighting in the tunnels during the last war in Gaza? So that it, this is the this is one of the main uh, challenge that the IDF have to deal with it in the next uh, campaign or the next uh, campaigns. Unfortunately, in the next decades, because the, the enemy find the, the underground medium is a very uh, good place to be in. And there will be no other possibility, and the, and all the armies, and the IDF inside, will have to fight underground. What we have learned in the last two weeks is that Hamas has completed digging a significant number of tunnels going into Israeli territory. Why doesn't Israel deal with them now? What are they waiting for? First, I think it's it's between the politician and the operational uh, forces, and. Uh, I assume that the operational forces are looking for some several more tools that they will be in their hand and and then when the politician will decide they have will be in much better point to to act during the last war the IDF declared that it destroyed 32 tunnels how effective was this destruction 
it was effective because we destroyed what they built. But nobody uh, thought that after this uh, uh, this uh, explosive and uh, destruction, they won't be they, they won't be, uh, dig anymore. They were they were digging during the last campaign and they digging after this campaign. And the point of the start of the next campaign won't be the end of the the last one. That's what you have to know. But if you were an inhabitant of the communities around Gaza, could you sleep well at night knowing that people are digging perhaps under your home? We both know that the Middle East it's a quite uh, tough neighborhood, and Israel it's not a place to be. Uh, you have to be worried. This, I, this is our destiny. I assume we will discuss that more. Thank you very much for coming to our studio, Colonel Thank you. Leshelach. And that's all we have time for. Join us again next week for I-24 News Defense. For all the latest headlines, log on to www.i24news.tv. Have a safe night from Jaffa Port.